going to order the, what, the May 22nd meeting of the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee of the Council. It is 10.38 a.m. Um, I, I'm about ready to declare that. Um, and we have a quorum, and we also have, probably off camera, our president who is here in um, her oversight role as president. So I just wanted to put that on there. And it looks like, oh, Pat, it's you. <laughs> Our minutes have rotated around to Pat. I don't let feel let well. The go to Pat just left the All right. Meeting. But <laughs> let the meeting, minutes show the meeting was adjourned. Yeah. I would appreciate it if everybody would send me their notes. So I'm not going to talk. Maybe that's the best. Thing. Please think about that. And, and we, we have a request for the minute taker to receive notes from everyone to help in minutes. So we are going to move forward with our agenda. Um, I sent out a revised agenda yesterday based on the referral that we received from the council on Monday night, so it did not make the 48 hours, but it is fine because I had on there items not anticipated 48 hours in advance. So our first item of business is the GOL charge, um, which we had a document for that got posted. Um, actually, Evan, yours is the one that got posted. So we should all pull that up. And it has to be downloaded to see the track changes. Um, there's a yellow highlight in there. A couple. Of, yes. Yes. So Evan, would you like to speak to what you did to this between meetings, if anything? So I did nothing to this between meetings. Um, all of the edits that you see here were done during our last meeting. And then at the very end of, based on the discussions we had, and at the very end of our last meeting, I uploaded that to SharePoint. So uh, I have done nothing to this that was not discussed in the last meeting. Sounds good. So it looks like we're going to deal with the highlighted portion. So Lynn, if you're trying to follow along, this is the GOL revised charge revised 5-8-2019 that is in the SharePoint. 522 meeting folder. Um, and everything that is not highlighted, I believe we had reached a consensus on. So we will deal with the highlighted portions that we pushed off to any formal vote or consensus until this week so that people could think about it. And so the first one I see is the second bullet point we were going to add, which is advise the town council on matters of town governance and organization. And there was a question as to whether we wanted to add upon referral by the town council to that sentence. Thoughts? Oh, no, you're just moving a mic. I don't even remember where people were last last time. So I don't remember either. So, so I can remind people. Excellent. Um, I believe four members of the committee felt as though that was probably uh, important, and I believe one member of the committee had concerns about it. That one member being myself, um, which was would this hamstring us if we wanted to uh, proactively do something. Um, I think that the consensus of the committee at the time was that if we wanted to do something like say recommend all town committees look at their charges, we could go to the town council and say we would like to do this, please refer this to us and then they could refer this to us, um, which is fine, um, but feels a little bit like why have that extra step um, and especially given the meeting schedule um, of the council uh, versus our meeting schedule, I don't, it, 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 could, it could prolong something that could be done uh, more expeditiously. So um, I'm not necessarily opposed to adding it, but I do think that it, uh, it adds an additional layer of bureaucracy that makes us slightly less efficient. Um, however, the concern of other members of the committee were that if it wasn't there, they would be concerned that this committee would just exceed its, its authority. Pat. Um, I, I agree with you about what you're saying. I don't think it's necessary because it also um, 
I don't think that it's necessary because we do get matters referred, but we also do need some independence to work, and I think that there's too much dependence on or too much concern about, oh, everybody's going to be afraid. So I don't know. That was totally inarticulate, but what he said. George? I'm always suspicious about this body trying to expand its sphere of influence or power, so I like upon referral by the town council. I'm also trying to get clear on the difference between the bullet point. The bullet point we're talking about right now and the next one, advise the town council on matters related to the activities and operation of town government is distinguished from advise the town council on matters of town governance and organization. Everyone's clear on that distinction? Evan? Yes. Um, the second bullet that you're referring to, the one that's completely highlighted, mm -hmm. um, was the bullet that we pulled directly from the December 10th draft standing committees put forth by the president of the council uh, that we put in there as a potential alternative bullet to the second one. So I don't believe we would ever keep both current bullets two and three. Um, they're, they're two variations on a similar concept, but the second one was pulled from the very, very first draft put forth to the council of what committees could do because we recognized uh, that some of the, that, that second bullet never made it into another committee's charge. Mm -hmm. With that explanation, does do, are members, does anyone have a preference between the two bullet points? If we believe them to be the same? Steve? Number two. So the one totally highlighted. Oh, I'm sorry. Number one. Okay. <laughs> the the the, the, two the, the, yeah. two, the second one listed, but yeah, yeah, yeah. but the non highlighted, non fully highlighted one. Highlighted. Yes. Could you speak to that? If you could, you speak to that. I like the brevity. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and got that? No. I, I know you do. That's why I look at you, Evan. Uh, I think the, the main substantive difference between the two is actually the sentence including regular review of needed and evaluation of town services, um, which uh, is maybe implied in the second bullet, but certainly more explicit in the second. Um, I believe this, I think I said this last time, I believe this bullet was pulled from any charge because uh, one member of the council, uh, who does not currently sit on this committee, um, felt as though evaluation of town services was beyond the scope of what a committee should do. They, they, I don't remember exactly, it was a long time ago, but there was an argument against it. Um, so I guess the real differentiation is do we feel like it's within the purview of this committee to do a regular review and evaluation of town services upon referral? I'm, I'm going to take my privilege and say I'm not sure that's within the original scope of our thoughts on the council's thoughts in terms of town services versus town organization. Those are two different things. Um, I guess that puts me in the first bullet point camp at that point. But I, I think I'm leaning towards non, not putting upon referral in by the town council into that bullet point, even if I was there last week. See, I'm unpredictable. <laughs> so I imagine that um, at some point in the year, somebody on this committee thinks, let's take a look at inspection services and how they're doing. Let's take a look at DPW and how they're doing. Let's take a look at the fire department and how they're doing. That does seem like something that A, probably none of us would want to take on, and B, way outside of what we imagined this uh, committee was supposed to be doing. If you're talking about activities and operation of town government, 
um, and needed evaluation of town services. That's pretty much everything. And, and regular review of that. So every year we could, in theory, look at every single department and, and sort of decide how they're doing. Anyone want to take that on? So I'm not saying it shouldn't be done, um, but, and that's probably why it was written in the first place, but, um, and I'm not sure where it should go. Yeah, that's what I was just going to ask. Exactly. Where should, where where should it, it go? Where would it go? Um, uh, probably community resources. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It does seem to be, does it seem to the rest of you that it would be a normal and healthy function of a council to, on a regular basis, on its own, um, just take a look at town services and um, how we're doing? Does that, does that seem like so outside? I, I, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, I would say not necessarily community resources. You could argue it's finance. Is the service needed to be paid for? You know, you could argue that it goes under the budgeting issues. Um, because well, it, uh, it, yeah. So, Pat. It speaks to what we. Mike. It speaks to what we were talking about on Monday. That there are things that don't go anywhere, and we're you know, and maybe if we're going to expand our charge to take on things that don't go anywhere, then we need the, we need that in here. Maybe not stated about town services directly. I, I but imagine you're Paul, and these people all report to you, and you're their boss, correct? He appoints their department heads, and he oversees their performance, and I assume he evaluates them. And now we're going to do that too? That seems like. Am I not? Am I missing something here? That seems like a gross overstepping of our authority as a council, let alone as a committee. So the charter allows us, as a council, to do that in terms of investigation. So I would say a regular review, in my opinion, is that overstepping versus, oh, we see a problem. Okay. Now we need to look at that problem. I think I think there's a difference between those two, um, which is why I guess I'm not too keen on that second half of that fully highlighted bullet. George? Well, it seems like the charter does allow us to do this if we see the need for it as a council. But the idea of a regular review and evaluation of town services would seem to be a direct sort of challenge to the, uh, the role and authority of, of the manager. That's what he does. Now, if we're not happy with the way the town is being run, then that means we're not happy with the person who's managing it. That's a different discussion. But I don't think we should be regularly evaluating town services. And, um, and Mandy's pointed out there is something in the charter that allows us to do it if there's such an uh, unusual case arises. But that's in the charter. So I think this should be stricken. Um, we're still back then to the very first one with uh, a the whole idea of, of what it means to advise the council on matters of town governance and organization, which is why I liked upon referral by the town council, because um, hopefully they would tell us what it is that we're supposed to be doing. Um, so I just want to sum up, because I was going to do that after George spoke anyway. It sounds like this fully highlighted bullet point, no one's really for. Am I correct in that? So that's a delete that bullet point completely and we're back to just the one on um, whether we want the upon referral by town council in or out. Do people feel they need to discuss that item more or should we just in essence vote up or down on that phrase?
I'm not here in discussion. So, um, You're hearing the sound of thinking. Yes. Yeah. Um, do we need more thinking before we take a vote on that decision or reach a decision? I think George, well, you're thinking. I, I felt, can tell. No, I felt it was. It was. I felt that this was driven in part by desire uh, for some by some of us to um, look at the committee structure and to see what uh, how things are going. But I was very forcefully uh, told that that's not part of what we do, um, or we were overstepping. Or but I still don't actually agree with that completely. Um, but. Um, I was more thinking of, 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 of the, town, the many, many committees the town has, and um, sort of our oversight could be, um, as was suggested, uh, occasionally asking them to review their, their, uh, their charges and to also consider maybe whether some should be uh, eliminated or some should be combined. Or, and, and if we don't do that, who does? Um, it's just sort of a hodgepodge system that, you know, I see this is a new form of government and we're perfectly free to decide to do things in a new way if we think it's a good idea. So I thought this was driven by that sense of, you know, there's so many committees, they do a lot of good work. Um, we're trying to get things somewhat, you know, organized and, and so forth. Charges are particularly what we're looking at, but it also could be extended to, you know, how many of these bodies uh, are really needed? Can we consider or make recommendations to the council that some might be, cons you know, combined or some could be eliminated? Or is, you know, and obviously they come, they've been established by very different authorities at different times and places, um, but now we are, as I understand it, um, the authority, or at least, right? So don't we have a role in this? Or do we buy the argument that we just kind of let it be because it's been created by, you know, it's created by town meeting, created by whatever, um, and so we should have to respect that and we should never touch it or question it or examine it or think about it. Just let it go on and on forever, I guess. So don't we have a role to think about it? Pat, did you have something? Vaguely. Um, I don't think that we need a upon referral. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need the upon referral by the town council. Our job is to advise the town council on matters. Um, and we bring our ideas to the council and at that point they say no, yes. Um, it, so I, I feel like we have to have some independence and, and the council has the final decision on anything that we do. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I don't, George, I'm a little confused by your question because it's not, it, well, I agree with everything you just said, but I'm not sure. I, I guess my disagreement is I agree with everything you just said. I just think that we should be able to proactively do that without needing a referral from the council. No, I, I'm, I'm hearing that too, actually. I, I'm, I'm willing to accept that. Um, I hear um, Pat's point that you've also made, I think, very clearly that this, we see, I think the issue for the council is going to be, look, we created you as to, to oversee town, this is, t you're, you're supposed to deal with town council matters. Now in this bullet point, you're also talking about town governance and organization. And so there's going to be pushback and, right, and so we need to be able to articulate clearly why we think that this charge includes not just town council, rules and governance and organization, but also town governance organization. And so if people could just articulate that a bit. I know we talked about this, maybe it's time to stop, but um, there's going to be pushback, I assume, from some counselors saying, you know, this is just, this is completely outside of what we asked you, your charge. So what do we say? Um, Mandy, yes. Mandy Joe, no. I, I would think you might want to refer back to the charter, I don't think it would be in this committee's purview to just say we think town government should be organized. However, the charter does allow the town manager to come forward with reorganization and 
this would be the committee I assumed we would refer that to. That, does that help clarify? Yes, it does. I think that's a point we made last week as this helps with that. Um, I think I'm hearing that all five of us are okay deleting upon referral from the town council now, and it's just now a matter of figuring out in the report how to defend that as not really an expansion of our ch charges originally given, more of a just clarification. Did I just summarize that somewhat accurately? George? Well, if it, 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 Lynn makes a very good point that if this is just a matter of if at some point the town manager comes to us and wants to do some kind of reorganization, then um, this would, uh, this bullet point would make it clear that it should come to us. And that's it. And so, and that's all that we really are having this bullet point do. Is that what people, or now I'm hearing, seeing, here not hearing, I'm seeing shaking of the head. Um, so what else do we imagine this bullet point is doing if it isn't just creating that space for when the town manager or if ever decides to do some kind of reorganization of town government? I would say it's creating the space for what we already voted we were going to do in looking at committee structures and duplication of committees. Um, so it creates the space for that. I, I think, personally, I think it clarifies the original wording that was GOL shall advise the town council on matters of internal rules, governance, and organization with did internal f flow through to everything or just to rules. Mm -hmm. And so we, this would clarify and say, no, this committee believes internal only flowed through to rules, not the rest of them. And that's why we're splitting it out into two bullet points. And we have the, the committee structure, the manager's reorganization plan, if, it, if he ever does one under the charter, has to come to the council for approval, that would get referred to us for any advice and recommendation and all. I see Evan nodding and Pat nodding. We ready to move on by deleting that, George, or do you need more time? No problem with deleting upon referral by the town council. And maybe we'll just have to have this discussion with the full council to get greater clarity for me personally. Um, and that's just the way we perhaps have to leave it uh, okay. as to what um, matters of town governance and organization mean. Because that's obviously open to interpretation. And you have given two examples where it would be applicable. And maybe that's the discussion we'll just have to have with the council. We can't put it into this bullet point. We'll just leave it the way it is and see if it flies. Uh, no, I think it's Evan. So um, I, I agree with everything George said, and I think that preparing the report on this will be very, um, we have to be very good about explaining what we interpret this bullet point to mean, because um, that'll frame the discussion. I, I want to bring up something that was brought up at our last meeting, which is then, of course, if we say our role is to advise the town council on matters of town governance, does that then imply that the evaluate, coordinating the evaluation of the town manager appropriately sits with this committee instead of OCA? We discussed it last time. I don't really, rem I think we all were sort of like, uh, I don't know. Um, and I think that the train has probably left the station for this year, but, uh, assuming this charge is meant to be revised so that it could be sustained for multiple years. Um, I think that's a question that m we might logically get asked in the future if this is it. Um, it's currently in the OCA charge, but would it create a conflict if OCA charge explicitly says evaluate town manager, and then our charge has advised the town councils on matters of town governance? So my initial response would be the specific of always overrules the more general so that it would remain sitting in OCA until and unless the OCA charge is revised. Um, but that if the OCA charge is revised, this could, this sentence could imply that it would then come to GOL, sit properly with GOL based on that sentence. But 
that would be my individual position. Thoughts? Shall we move on to the other two highlighted bullet points, which are essentially two rewordings of the same idea that we brought to the council for discussion on Monday night. Um, everyone heard that discussion. Anyone care to indicate their thoughts based on that discussion of what we should do with these bullet points? <laughs> George is laughing. Evan? So last meeting I said it would be useful to get, to bring this question to the town council and get their opinion on that. And I know that this was done after a very lengthy and somewhat contentious and emotionally draining debate, but I still do not feel as though I got a sense from the council about which they would prefer. We presented this to the council. Uh, I got a sense from Alyssa that she was supportive. I got a sense from Darcy that she prefer we retain the current charge, or, or, or not at least not insert this. Um, Dorothy, I am not sure where she fell. She gave several statements that didn't necessarily give a clear picture of which of the three options we should pre we presented she preferred. Um, and then as for the other uh, five members of the council, I don't believe there was any, any comment whatsoever. And so um, this committee has struggled for months with this, and we finally decided let's bring it to the council to get their feedback that we could use to make a decision. And I actually, after that discussion, do not feel like we're in any better place because uh, a majority of the non-GOL members of the council did not provide us any feedback. I May I just add, I have notes that Kathy said she potentially liked adding it to this charge, um, but she had some caveats to that. Those are, that, that was the only person you, you didn't mention. Um, what I have noted is that she find if we she said that maybe with a slight modification or a weight that if there's a cluster of issues that seem to be missing from another committee, um, then maybe this is something that should be in our charge, um, but that it might be early on to do that because um, we just don't know yet. Um, and then she also mentioned instead of just council committee in these this language that appears to imply standing only that council or ad hoc committee um, so that it could go to an ad hoc committee. Um, I, I personally wasn't sure I understood that because the purpose of this was to not create ad, so many ad hoc committees, but maybe if there's an already standing, an already created ad hoc committee that it could go to that one. Um, but. That was what I have written for her comments. George. I thought I very eloquently summarized this problem at the council meeting, but apparently it's already been forgotten. That this seems to be a solution in search of a problem. Um, I didn't get a sense that there was a strong crisis amongst the council members that we've got to solve this problem. It's really a headache. We don't know what to do, da, 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 da. So my suggestion, humble as it was, was do nothing. Um, let's let it sit, delete these two, and if the problem does arise and it becomes a problem the council really starts to, to, to fret about, um, then we have a possible solution in our back pocket. But I may be misreading the council. I certainly misread it last night in other regard, but I didn't get a sense that um, there was a strong <laughs> feeling that we really need to do something about this big problem we have. It, we got all kinds of different answers we got, you know. Um, and so given it was all over the map, uh, my suggestion is for the moment let it sit and uh, let's come back to it in six months when we do our annual review of how we're doing. And um, I may join the 
chorus and say, yes, we, have to, we need this now. But I don't see it as a problem at the moment, and I don't see that we need to spend any more time tearing our hair out about it. Steve. Yeah, um, I'd like to second it from the bottom. So this is the same thing as, to me, in my opinion, putting at the end of a job description, other duties as assigned. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that other duties as, as assigned are consistent with the duties listed above, but these are the ones that we've forgotten about. Um, I dread the possibility of there being the matter that comes before the council, for which we have no appropriate committee, and the agonizing discussion there on the floor whether or not we should now um, change the charge of the GOL and or the nightmare solution, another ad hoc committee. So I'm, this, I see this as the no ad hoc committee bill, so. I have a higher fear threshold. <laughs> Steve. So there's a principle in zoning. It all comes back to zoning. But there's a principle in zoning that every anticipated use should be in the zoning bylaw. Otherwise, you get in trouble. So, uh, so the planning board actually tries to get ahead of like medical marijuana and recreational marijuana are two examples of possible new uses. This is a long answer, so that there is a landing spot. Otherwise, it goes into a bouncing ball that can, you don't know what the, where, where it's gonna come out. Yeah. I see this as a similar goal. Um, the problem with ad hoc committees is that we're all totally fully booked, you know, with council stuff already. An ad hoc committee throws that off balance, yeah. but more importantly, it throws the public off balance. So the public who's trying to, if we had an ad hoc committee on a controversial issue, they would have no clue how to follow that controversial issue you know, through the process. So they're having a hard enough, enough time already with our standing committees as named. So that's where Hopefully I stand. Because of our hours, I think. But, yeah. um, that's, that's really helpful. Thank you. Evan? I was just going to summarize and say so I've heard a request or a preference to delete both and a preference for the top of the two options. Um, I haven't really heard a preference for the bottom of the two options. So I think we can probably, that was my rewording and what I actually presented to the council on Monday night. Um, I am willing to not fight for it. So if there's no preference on this committee for that one, we can just delete that one and then discuss whether to put in or take out the top bullet point. Evan. Um, so first of all, I think Steve just very nicely articulated my three reasons against ad hoc committees. And I hope that if this comes up to the council again, you'll do the same to the council because um, I, I thought I explained why and then we heard lots of eh, ad hoc committees are fine. Um, so what I will say is, <laughs> sorry Mandy Joe. If we have to choose between these two bullets, I actually prefer the second one. And um, I think it's the phrasing, and I recognize I wrote this, um, <laughs> recommend policy it could be interpreted. Review or recommend policy proposed for action. I feel like I like make recommendations on matters referred to than or recommend policy. The two things say almost the exact same thing, but there's something about recommend policy that even though I wrote it makes me uncomfortable. Um, however, that said, you all know I've struggled with this, um, but I, I was really hoping to bring this to the council and have a clear, much like we did with rules, have a clear sense of where they wanted us to go on this. And we did not get that in any direction. Right? I mean, there was no, I think to some of us were probably bracing for an outcry of like, absolutely not, you are a technical review. We didn't get that. 
we also didn't get a like, yes, please. And so I guess my thought is given any, uh, given a lack of any real sense of the council, I would probably lean on taking no action. And so I might actually agree with George on this, that if the council, if the council did not give us a strong opinion either way, which is sort of frustrating, but that absent a directive, I tried like tallying, <laughs> tallying and I have option one, Darcy, option two, no one, option three, Alyssa, Kathy with a question mark, and then I have outside of all three of those, Dorothy question mark. So I don't have a sense of where the council wants us to go and uh, given that, I, I would probably lean on not doing anything for the time being then on this. So I think that's two votes for nothing. So essentially delete, <laughs> de delete the two there. Um, it's after the council meeting where I was leaning, I will say, without any clear guidance. Um, so Pat and Steve, thoughts on leaving it as, as is, essentially not putting either of those bullet points in and seeing if in the next six months we get clearer guidance from either the council or just for what comes forward. I'm gonna tell you this, can I make a motion? Is there sure, a motion? make a motion. I, I'll make a motion to, oops. I'll make a motion to approve the second from the bottom. Which one would you read? Yeah, I'll read that one. Review or recommend policy proposed for action by the town council at the request of the town council for which no appropriate council committee exists to perform such action. Do I hear a second? As chair, I will second it just so we can have a vote. Any. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? All those against? Steve, that fails. My middle name. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm totally joking. <laughs> Fails four, one to four was the vote for the minutes, and you've got that, right? Yes. Um, any other motions that people might want to make? Evan's thinking about it, I can tell. No, I actually don't want to make a motion. I'm just, I'm just thinking, I, I do hope that we come back to this question. I do hope that we do come back to this question. There is a part of me that wants to see a number of issues come up to the council and have us, so campaign finance, right? It sounds like the decision was GOL is going to review it for clarity, consistency, and actionability, and then it's going to go back to the council for a full debate on content. Mm -hmm. And that's going to occur on the same night that we start considering the budget. And I, I, part of me feels as though we are going to very quickly realize that that is uh, inefficient use of council time. Mm -hmm. And there is a part of me that would almost like to see a few issues come up where we either create an ad hoc committee and everyone goes, oh, or the council has to do that. But I think I agree with George that I'd like then for the council to give us a clear directive that they would like this bullet to be created. I'm, I'm, I've been keeping track of edits. I'm going to delete those two bullets at this point. I think with Steve's failed motion, that might be where we are consensus-wise. Yeah. So, yeah. And that brings us to the end of the modifications of the charge. Um, do, does the committee want to see it Un, you know, sort of in its, you know, sort of modified form prior to voting on whether to bring this as a recommendation to the council, or shall we vote now on whether to bring this as a recommendation for a modified charge of GOL to the council? I think we should each do this. So, do I hear a motion to recommend the? revisions as 
discussed over the last number of meetings um, to the governance organization legislation committee charge to the council. Second. Yep. Could you read the motion in the back that I have is um, to recommend the revisions made to GOL um, to the council. But you said something else there. That I don't the, that's revisions. essentially what I said. It was just the revisions yeah. were not just today. Yeah. So the the that's the whole the entirety of the revisions, yeah. yeah. Okay, any discussion on that? All those in favor? That's unanimous. That brings us to, oh, yep, Evan? A uh, ho housekeeping question, so I've been keeping track. Do you want me to email this to you? Do you want me to s put it on SharePoint somewhere? So, um, email it to me so I can, I'm not sure where on SharePoint I'll put it. So email it to me, email it to me with track changes and then I can set up both a tracked version and a clean version for the council mm -hmm. so that they can see both. Um, yeah, and so that brings us to the added um, agenda item which is discussion of the limitations on campaign contributions proposed, by law proposed, you know, per the May 20th town council referral. Um, so, this was referred to us for a clarity, consistency, and actionability. We have, I posted onto SharePoint the, um, the bylaw itself, but also our town attorney's opinion email of that bylaw that was sent to her. Um, so that is in the PDF on the, that so we can see what she believed needed changed. And our review is strictly for clarity, consistency, and actionability. So um, are there any thoughts to section A in terms of clarity, consistency, and actionability? And uh, before I actually, before I start recognizing people, um, for people that might be watching since there's no audience today, um, two of the five members of this committee are the actual sponsors of this measure. So that is myself and Councillor Ross. Um, so we will, I, at least I'm gonna attempt to not talk much about it since we proposed it, but um, try to let the discussion to the other three members, um, but that's for full disclosure. I am not seeing any, oh, George. My understanding from what you said the other night uh, was that this is pretty much taken from or modeled upon fairly closely the Northampton um, document. So I'm assuming that it, maybe you could highlight places where you made changes or were changes simply to amounts or percentages, but otherwise the language is pretty much the language that Northampton is using. And we can assume that it uh, has gone through fairly rigorous legal review. I mean, ours will, I assume, will go through it as well, but. We're looking at something that is been um, carefully reviewed elsewhere, and you are using the language pretty much of that. Evan, do you wanna to speak to that? Sure, uh, so A1 is uh, a word for word copy of Northampton's right. with the exception of the uh, number. So we have 0 0.25, um, which is uh, different, they have uh, one so they used a fraction and the number's a little bit different, otherwise it's the exact same. Uh, two is that exact same language copied, the only different, uh, A2 is that exact same language copied, the only difference is uh, Northampton 
only limits contributions from individuals, we're also limiting them from, uh, from PACs. And so A2 is the language from A1, except subbing out contributions from individuals with contributions from municipal political action committees. Um, and then the reference to MGL is different because MGL regulates political action committees in a different, uh, same chapters, different section. And so I guess A2 doesn't exist in Northampton. B does not exist in Northampton, and C is a copy of Northampton's, I believe, with appropriate modifications because of differences. Northampton has a separate limit for mayoral races that has been obviously deleted from this one. So any thoughts on clarity, consistency, actionability of section A1 or A2? I am not seeing any. We'll move on to section B, municipal political action committees. I see some shaking heads of no, so we'll move on to section C, examination of reports, excess contributions. And this is the section that the town attorney um, had a question about. So she had written that um, further that to enforce the bylaw using non-criminal disposition, the dollar amount of the fine cannot be characterized as, quote, up to an amount. Instead, it must be a particular dollar amount no greater than $300. Um, and then she said, moreover, the bylaw should be revised to include an amendment to Article 6, Section 1B, which includes reference to the particular bylaw to be enforced through non-criminal disposition, the fine per violation, and the enforcing person or persons. Is that a reference to our current bylaws, Article 6? The very first paragraph is where I just found it. So up at the top. And then I have a question for Pat as her representative of the bylaw review committee. Yeah. <laughs> no, my, my question is, is there a recommendation or a thought on what number we should attach to this bylaw title? You know, I think you guys are renumbering the bylaws like right. sections yeah. one point whatever, two point whatever. Yeah, is there a convention and should we just add the number to the very end. That, that's the only other question I have, and I should have, I'm sorry, I should have given that you a heads up of that. Six, section 1B. So section 1B is non-criminal, is, so this is, Um, so section 6.1b is the part that has non-criminal disposition. So what, I'm sorry, what is she saying needs to? She said the bylaw should be revised to include an amendment to Article 6, Section 1b, which includes references to the particular bylaw to be enforced through non-criminal disposition. So does Article 6, Section 1b list specific bylaw numbers? Is that what it is? Section 6.1b reads, whoever violates any provisions of the articles two through four of the bylaws of the town of Amherst listed below, the violation of which is subject to a specific penalty may be penalized by a non-criminal disposition as provided in the general laws, chapter 40, section 21d. So it references a whole host of So as long as we four. add this to article two of the bylaws, we wouldn't have to amend article six, section 1b. Correct. Uh, with regard to your previous question, and I'm going to ask uh, Pat to stop me if I'm saying something that is incorrect. Um, so I, I did, f this is maybe going to create a little bit of headache for Pat and myself on bylaw review if this passes 
this will pass up while we're doing our review. Um, I formatted the bylaw to the conventions that the bylaw review committee is using. So if you take our current bylaw as written and stick it in our current bylaw, the formatting will not match. It will match what bylaw review is okay. presenting as right. revised. I did that intentionally. It, it could create a little bit of headache ahead of time. Uh, bylaw review currently has organized our bylaws into three section into three articles, and article three is pretty much everything that's not ad administrative. And so my assumption is this will be plugged into a part of article three, and so this non-criminal disposition thing will likely read provisions of article three, okay. and so it will be all encompassing. Um, a brief discussion we had a long time ago, and, and please correct me if I'm misremembering, um, was essentially that uh, bylaw review would hope that when people pro propose bylaws, they would not number them mm -mm. and leave it to the town clerk to assign a number to the bylaw. Oh, okay. Okay, so that answers my question of should we be proposing a number to the bylaw <coughs> on clarity, consistency, and actionability? Okay. Yeah. I mean, So I think given what Evan read on Article 6, Section 1B, as long as in the interim it is plugged into Article 2 or Article 4, whatever those two Article 6 referred to, it, Article 6 doesn't need amended. As long as we plug this into the correct article in the bylaws, and that would be for the clerk to do in this interim period. But that, uh, Evan? I'm, I'm looking at our most recent draft of by, from bylaw review. And so we've moved what was Article 6 into Article 1, administrative provisions. Article 1.2 is violations, criminal complaint, non criminal disposition. 1.2b is whoever violates any provisions of Article 3 of the bylaws. And so this would be put into Article 3. So okay. this would not need amended. Okay. Um, I think the only thing then we have to deal with is the um, the up to issue for actionability in section C, which right now says any it's the last sentence any person or committee failing to purge excess contributions within such time shall be subject to a fine not exceeding two hundred and fifty and the town attorney's opinion said that we had to have a particular dollar amount. So Steve. I just have a really dumb question. Who collects, who, how, where, how does this money get collected? Is it, it's not the police, is it? It would, it would be the town, so it would be non-criminal disposition enforced by the town clerk. So should the rewording be um, any person or committee failing to purge excess contributions within such time shall be subject to a fine of mm -hmm. 250 instead of not exceeding? I think that's what we have to do. Does that sound like uh, a logical rewording in terms of to make it consistent with the legal opinion of it needs to be an actual number, not an up to number, which is separate from whether 250 is wise. Wise in what direction? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve. So the goal of this bylaw is to encourage other people other than the usual suspects to run for office. So I guess I get worried about someone who is basically not politically savvy, um, making a mistake. You know, in other words, going all in, maybe they're go, they set up a GoFundMe account or whatever. So somehow they accidentally trigger this. 
the idea that we would then penalize that person $250 and have to, we have to penalize them. To me, that's why I like the up to, or at least a waiver provision, the inclusion, because this is a must statement, right? Yes. Yeah, so either, you know, I don't have any idea if we can do a waiver on this or, but I don't want to disenfranchise the already disenfranchised, who are, is exactly the group we're trying to encourage to um, participate. So we've got a weird situation where the sponsors are here, but we're not supposed to be dealing with content. content um, which well, I think normally you'd send it back to the, the sponsors. The sponsors, but since the sponsors are, are here, here yes. I think that seems somewhat silly. So I think the sponsors, if they want, could recommend or offer a number, or they could say they want to go back and think about it more. But it's not our job to provide the number. Do you have a thought, Evan? I know I have a thought, but I'm going to defer to you first. Okay, so my thought is potentially, um, I don't, I, I liked the up to, but we obviously can't do that. Um, we could either change the number lower or that could be a second fine, a second violation. We could probably add language in that says any person or or committee failing to purge excess contributions within such time shall be subject to a fine upon second violation. I, I'd have to come up with some wording, but something that's like after the first violation shall be subject to the fine so that that might um, alleviate the mistakes the first time. But I'm, I'm not sure in my head what that wording would exactly look like now. I'm sure we could find some other um, things in other bylaws that, that have a first time violation, a second time violation, if we wanted to step that up. Evan. So th the text is that upon discovering such a violation, the town clerk shall in writing notify that candidate, candidates committee chair or political action committee chair, candidates, candidate committees or political action shall have 15 days to purge all excess contributions and if they fail to do so, they're subject to a fine. So it's not if you violate this, you're automatically fined $250. If you violate this, the town clerk says you have to return any contributions in excess of the limit. And then if they fail to do so, so that to me, Mindy Joe, that sort of is what you're talking mm. about, right? Yeah. You get, it, it's not that you get a warning, but you get to keep the money. It's you get notified, hey, just to let you know, you violated this law, and so you have to purge the excess, and then if they refuse, then they're subject to a fine, but to me, that first step sort of is a warning, right? Yeah. That fit, it, it's like, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get it, I get it. Pat. Uh, bouncing, off Steve, bouncing off Steve a little bit, um, during the camp, uh, our campaigns, um, I got a contribution of $300, which would be over this limit, from a friend of mine who was in my dance company who lives in Hoboken, New Jersey, and saw I was running for office. And it feels really odd that I would have to return that money to someone who generously offered it and doesn't live in Massachusetts or Amherst and doesn't know what the rules are. And that sort of feels like the GoFundMe page. Um, so, I don't know. Evan. Ben, I mean, the other side of that is if your friend was super generous and wrote you a check for $1,100, oh, right, you right. would have had, they would be, because they don't know Massachusetts state law, you would have still had to return that extra hundred, right? Because the, the state limit's a thousand, right? Yeah. And so this doesn't change the dynamic you described, it just lowers the amount, right? And so you would have had to do that anyway if it was above a thousand dollars so we're discussing policy yes I, which is a, is is partly the dynamic because the two sponsors are sitting on this 
committee. committee. And I'm not trying to pull up, we have to stop this conversation because we're discussing policy, but it is interesting that we just finished <laughs> having the conversation and now we're doing it, which sort of points to a discussion we had earlier, which is sometimes it almost feels inevitable that we will discuss policy. So I don't know what to do with this conversation right now. Steve. It's always better to have the conversation here with five of us than out in front of 13. Because I, I mean, I think that these are useful. Uh, and this is why I felt strongly that we should be talking about the policy. But if, if we imagine someone coming George. forward to us with a bylaw presentation and this issue arises, do we imagine that we would then engage in a, a back and forth with them about the, the amount of the fine or da 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 da? Wouldn't we say, okay, this is clearly something you need to go back and think through. We're not going to sit here while you think out loud with us. It's not our job to uh, help you figure out what your bylaw is about. Um, and, and we're just here to get it clear, consistent, and actionable. And there's clearly an actionability problem because our lawyer tells us that you can't have this phrase. Um, so you need to go back and fix it. Um, I guess they could just right there and then say, okay, we're going to make it X. And I guess we could say fine. Um, but normally, I think we'd say, you need to go home or you know, come back to us when you figured it out. And probably in many cases, they would do that because they have, as you've seen, there's some other considerations. Maybe you want a first time. Maybe you want a second time. Maybe you want a, a waiver. Um, so um, how do the two presenters feel? Do they want to, um, and if they do solve this, they should solve it themselves. So, so I just we shouldn't be engaged in a discussion about the number or the waivers or anything else. Right. Um, I'm, I'm going to summarize a GOL fact document that we adopted on how we would do these reviews, which is we would work with the sponsors when we come up with an actionability to see what they want to do. Right. Um, that is, right now, that is change the wording of, you know, and because that the up to doesn't work. So the question is, it needs changed or else this committee cannot declare it actionable. Um, we could have a recommendation as to what to change it to. The most basic is I think what I recommended, um, which is delete not exceeding and put of in there. That's the most basic. And so I think under our FAQ, that would go to the sponsors and say, do you agree or do you want a rewording? without any discussion in this committee of whether that's a wise rewording of the change we're recommending in terms of policy making. Um, I think that's where our GOL FAQ is, is here's a rewording that doesn't change in some sense, a, a rewording that we think makes it actionable. Do you guys agree? Or do you want to suggest another wording that we can look at to determine actionability? George. This is actually probably worth our time because it's a good example of what may someday come to us with people who might be less friendly or less. Uh, and I would say your suggestion already exceeds what we should be doing. We just point out that this is, it can't have this phrase and you have to figure out um, how to make it right and we shouldn't be suggesting any alteration um, in this case because what you're really doing is suggesting a number. Um, and that's not our business. Um, we're just pointing out that this is not actionable and this is why, and you need to fix it. And if they ask us, well, how can we fix it? Uh, uh, what do you wish to say? I would think we'd say, <laughs> it's, I mean, right? This is content now. It's not, you know, it, you're, you've got to decide what you want the fine to be. Um, and you say, a fine not exceeding $250, that's, uh, that's zero to 250. And, um, I think we should simply say, come back to us when you figure out what you want the fine to be. One of the things that we did with ETAC was work on, I believe, this kind of issue mm -hmm. where there were disagreements in our meeting mm -hmm. with both Evan and Darcy. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why we can't yeah. do it here, particularly when I think both people agree on, the, uh, who are sponsoring it, uh, agree to the fix, I think. Um, because you're not predictable and having a hard time knowing. But, <laughs> I hear you but, there, Pat. But you yeah. see what I mean? It just seems totally no, I, inefficient right. to make them go away and come back next meeting. No, I was thinking of, of Mandy's hypothetical, saying, well, we could suggest to them X, 
And what I'm saying is, no, we won't suggest anything. Um, but if Mandy and or whoever, the, you know, she says to Evan or they say, we want to make it X, then we can respond to that. But we shouldn't be offering suggestions to them about how to change their content. I think that we did offer suggestions. Really? With and most of the time, the sponsors for ECAC did not want to work on them there, mm -hmm. which was perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. And I think there were a few that made it through during our meeting, but I might be imagining that or misremembering it. I, I think it's totally inefficient to. Well, what I'm afraid is gonna happen is I could say, well, how about $50? And Evan could say, how about 100? And Steve could say, why not there be a waiver? And pretty soon we're having a discussion about their bylaw. But and that's just not appropriate. I think that discussion could be stopped by the chair, yes, or the vice chair, except they're both involved in this thing. <laughs> but um, I think that could be stopped, and I agree. But they can decide right now, or they can decide to wait. But I think yeah, it's fine. their decision, and it can happen here one way or the other. I agree 100%. I just don't think we should be, as a committee, um, involved in the, in the nitty gritty of, of specifics like this, as a, just in general. Yes. And, but yes. we may disagree on that. But yes. So. Kevin. Evan. I'm sorry. Evan. So I'm trying to take, obviously, myself out of the equation here and think if this was a sponsor who was sitting there and what our process has been. And it seems to me, from our discussion, that in our review of clarity, consistency, and actionability, the only point of debate tends to be this fine not exceeding 250, which we determine is not actionable based on town attorney. If a sponsor was here, what I would probably recommend that the committee do to them, do to them, uh, <laughs> recommend that we do, <laughs> is I would probably say this, this piece is not actionable you cannot do not exceeding, it needs to be a number, and we will declare this bylaw clear, consistent, and actionable, contingent on you putting a firm number on there. And then it is up to them to decide what that number is gonna be, but as long as they do that, our declaration carries. If they come to the council, if they then start to bring this to the council and it still says not exceeding, we would say, okay, you didn't do that, we're going to withdraw our declaration. And this is all spelled out in the process we adopted in the, yeah. in the fact. If they came back and it was something very different, we, the town clerk would offer a waiver to some people, then we might say, you exceeded what we said, we're gonna withdraw that declaration and we think you have to come back, right? But that's probably what I would do. I, I would not get into such a detailed debate. Given our current charge, or even our newly recommended revised charge, it seems like that debate is outside the purview. It seems like we're just here to say, this one piece is not actionable. We will declare this actionable contingent on you changing that wording. I'm gonna recognize Lynn and then you, George. Lynn. I, I think Evan's given you a good solution, unfortunately, but it's for another meeting related to town. Um, I, I do wanna say that there is some concern about the time that this issue is going to take up at our June 3rd meeting. So even though I'm not really speaking to GOL per se, if you will, but in many ways to the sponsors uh, as you bring it forward, I do think um, I'm going to have to put a time limit on the amount of time we spend on this on June 3rd and also depending on where we are and other things on June 17th. To the extent, therefore, that the various people who have provided observations about candidates in Amherst who have accepted more than um, the $250 in their campaigns, whether they were successful or not, because um, I got the distinct impression that, I think it was Steve, and unfortunately he's left the room, that there may actually be 
some candidates who would have had a tough time entering a campaign, um, who maybe did get a boost of a serious amount, and that this was almost counterintuitive to that issue. It always concerns me when people get big donations, okay? I'm, I personally limited my donations to $100. Um, it didn't make it easy to raise money, but I felt like that's where I wanted to be. So I personally have no problem with, with limits, but I do find that other issue one that I think the sponsors at least should bring in. Okay. George. No, I'm going to have to limit the debate that hour, that time of the meeting because of the, the budget. Yep. Understood. George. Again, picking up on Pat's point um, and with Evan's point that if the sponsor wants to make the change right then and there, I don't think we would have any problem with that. And then we could just declare it actionable without any contingencies whatsoever. Is that, is that your thought or do you feel, I mean, again, the, the hypothetical we're dealing with is actually close to a real one. Imagine the sponsor sitting there and says, okay, we'll make it 200. I mean, we want to work with them. Right. We don't want to make this a cumbersome process. So at that point, it's now actionable and end of story. I just don't want us to be engaged in a back and forth. They say, well, what do you think about 200? And, and <laughs> I don't think anything about 200. But so, yeah, I so if you two of you today want to say X and we can agree on it, good, let's do it. But if you want more time to think about it, that's fine too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's part of I'm our just don't, I'm not going to offer yeah. an opinion on what yeah. I think that number should or shouldn't be of right. any kind. So if I was here just as a resident bringing forth policy and GOL said to me, you cannot do not exceeding, my knee-jerk solution would be fine. I will change that to of 250. And then GOL would say, that makes it actionable. And I would say, great. And then when I bring it to the council, the councilors can say, what about this? What about this? We don't like this. We don't like the number. Yeah. But um, I, I, yeah, I, I agree. And um, there's two sponsors here. I am fine just saying of. And if the council feels like that's a problem, then I'm happy to have that debate with councilors. I, I, that's my also knee jerk reaction is to just oh. change it to of. And then um, one thing I would ask is say sponsor um, is. You know, Evan and I have not, the sponsors have not talked about limits, the, the 0.25 that is in there that would create the other limits in response to anything we heard on Monday night or in emails coming to us at later times. We haven't talked about whether, say, the up to changing it to of is a good one. So my question as a sponsor would be um, if we decide to talk before it comes back on June 3rd to the council, and change, say, the percentage in A, 1, 2, or B from 0.25 to some other number, um, or change the dollar amount in C, is there a way that the vote taken potentially today on clarity, consistent and ac consistency, and actionability can uh, encompass those changes so that it doesn't have to come back here for a revote on something like that if those are the only things that are being changed. If we were to go back and talk to each other and say, hey, you know, based on that, maybe this number is a better number to have. Um, I, as a sponsor, wanting it in front of the council for the first read on June 3rd and knowing this is the only GOL meeting before then, I want I, I would kind of like some sort of vote that encompasses those potential changes but does not change the GOL's declaration if those are the only changes, changing, say, 0 0.25 to a different number um, that is lower than 1 based on the attorney's ruling and changing 250 to a different number that is lower than 300. George. We send to the council a report which includes, in this case, I assume it would be the bylaw, right? And with our recommendation, 
how can it get changed at that point? I mean, let's say that I mean, the, the people hear us and they say, no, I want to keep it just this way, <laughs> which in other words is not actionable, but that's what they want to do. So um, we would forward it as is with the statement, we can't recommend this because it's not actionable. Um, but let's say they do change it, and then what? 48 hours before the council meets, they meet again and they decide to, t to jigger it some more? How can they, A, how can they do that? And B, wouldn't we want to have some say in that? Would, I mean, we'd have to say, look, we haven't seen this and, you know. And well, that's why I'm asking as a sponsor, right. if, if it's those numbers, because the prior discussion was, well, if we say you can come back with a hard number, then we can vote a contingent as long as there's a hard number in there, it's fine. So my question is, if after this vote, can we somehow make that vote that if that number changes, it's the vote stills good? You know, right. uh, that, that's what I'm asking That as a specific sponsor. number may be yes, but if you start talking about and then they decide to add a waiver and then they decide to make an right. of and and, and at, at that point I go, wait a minute, that's, that's, you know, this is not what we agreed on. Hence my question, yeah. Evan. So the fact that the, the FAQ that we adopted, which is in some uh, to some extent we adopted our process via that FAQ, even though it wasn't technically a process document, but it does say GOL is the last step in the process before a measure reaches the full town council. Sponsors should finalize all content of our proposed measures before sending it to GOL. My, my read of that would be once GOL has looked at it, it cannot be changed between GOL and the full town council. And so if the sponsors of this decided that they wanted to change a number, to some extent I feel like it would have to be done as an amendment to in council debate. Because I, 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 don't, I would even feel uncomfortable saying we're gonna take a vote but this vote has this tiny carve out because that opens, like, where does that end? And if we say we're the last stop and it's, the content must be final by the time, th this sort of, uh, trying to not to say this sucks <laughs> because we're on camera, but I just did. So because we have a time constraint, yeah. right? Because in order to get this in place in time, it needs to be read for the first time on June 3rd and GL doesn't meet again, R rationally, the sponsors would have had time to take the comments we got on council and revise and then send to GOL. We didn't because we only had Yesterday. 48 hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so the time constraint made this sort of a flawed process. But um, even speaking as the sponsor, I would feel uncomfortable with having like a weird carve out that says these are the things you're allowed to change between council. I think that if, if we decide we want to change something, we have to do it in council debate. I'm okay with that. I was just asking the question yeah, no, no, because there's, there's, that was the potential of a contingent yeah. vote. So I was just asking the question as a sponsor. Um, so I think we have heard from both sponsors that changing the words not exceeding to of is approved by both sponsors. And I believe as a committee, are those the only changes the non-sponsor members of this committee are suggesting for clarity, consistency, and actionability? So then I am looking for a motion to declare the limit, I'm looking for the title of this, limitations on campaign contributions proposed by law, clear, consistent, and actionable. As, as amended. amended. Yeah, the bylaw as amended. Second. The, the, I'm writing down the motion so I have the wording. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? All those against? All those abstaining? That is a 3-0-2 vote.
which means it passes. So that has been declared bad. Um, that brings us to our next agenda item, uh, which is dis well, I'm going to actually ask the committee of the next three which they would prefer to discuss. We have discussion of revisions to the BCG charge for template conformity. We have um, discussions of revisions to the JCPC charge for template conformity. Both of those are holdovers from last meeting. And begin follow-up on town committee charge update request. We have approximately a half an hour. Um, so shall we just go in order at this point? Okay. So that means we are up to the BCG charge for template conformity. Um, Evan brought forth a proposed revision. Um, so thank you, Evan, for doing that. And this is still one that's just weird in my mind. Um, you did not track changes of this one, right? You just put it into the template? Because I'm not seeing track changes. Yeah, I'm not seeing track changes. Yeah, so I think if I, th this was done like a month ago now. Um, so if I'm remembering correctly, um, I essentially had the prior charge open on my screen and also our template and I copy and pasted into the template. Um, and so there was no document uh, to edit um, because I just copy and pasted in. I'm recognizing now that creates some confusion as to what was added by me and what is part of the original charge uh, without comparing the two documents. So I apologize to the committee for that because that does make this a little bit more difficult to review. Um, what I will say is that the composition charge and reports, I believe, are from the original charge, although I'd have to bring it up. The purpose was written by me. Okay. That's helpful. Thank you, Evan. And it, it is was very difficult to write a purpose because it literally says the budget coordinating group coordinates budgeting. <laughs> so, you know. Any thoughts on this charge? Did I hear George. you say you have some, uh, did I mishear, or did you felt you had some concerns about this? So, I, I, my, it's not really a concern, it's just this is a weird one because weird one. the composition doesn't have any specific numbers. There's really, it, it's just, it was the discussion we had when we created it to begin with, and I'm just not sure how to put that into our template. That's all. Um, it, it's just, it's a weird committee on how we created it, and I'm not sure we're ta we shouldn't be tasked with fixing that. So the composition just still looks weird to me, but we're not here to right. figure out a fix to that. So. <laughs> and it doesn't show the changes in action. Right. Yeah. I think we can move it. So I'm not sure what the motion here is. I guess since there were additions, it would be a motion to recommend. What is it? Um, To, to recommend the council accept the charge as amended, approve the charge as amended. Is, is that what it is? Evan. I mean, so I have the original charge up. So do people, given the lack of track changes, do people want me to walk them through what I did or do you feel, I'm happy to do that if you feel like that is, that, that the information you need now that I, see the second, the, the original charge, I can do that. But if you feel like this looks good, I'm also happy to uh, save us time. Does anyone want walked through what Evan did? 
So what is our motion again? Is it to recommend the council approve revisions to the BCG charge as presented? Is, does that sound like a logical motion? Revised BCG charge. Do I hear a motion? Oh, yeah. Well, I guess with revised, we didn't do anything to it today. So, um, do I hear a motion? Evan moves. Do I hear a second? Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. Which brings us to the JCPC charge. So give us all a second to get that one open. And this is the one I did. So I, um, you will see lots of stuff um, because I did, I took the JCPC one and then tracked all the changes into the template. So what, I, I sort of took the different tact than Evan did. Um, and so there are a ton of changes simply because we're changing titles. So you'll see. So where do you have this one? I mean, I thought it, I pulled up the revised. Uh, you have to download it to see the track changes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's why there looks like there's a ton of changes, but it's because I took the original charge and then started changing headings and moving stuff around because of the order the original charge and all was on. Um, but I'll go through what essentially changed. Um, added the abbreviation. Um, the type I declared charter. Wasn't sure what, uh, what else to do. Um, the big changes were in number of voting members, I got rid of the description up in the header and put that down in the composition and then reformatted it. I added a purpose. Um, since none of these charges had purposes, I was faced with the same thing Evan was faced with. And then the charge the formatting's weird, but I essentially attempted to format that as we have been formatting with bullets. Um, I have a two should other duties be added with a question mark, um, which is more for JCPC's been discussing that. So that's something that I, I, I just threw in there as a sort of placeholder in my mind. Membership essentially got moved up and and reformatted into composition. That's why it's deleted down there. Deleted staff support because we decided not to put that in this description and then reports added um, to the town council as necessary since that was something we wanted to be adding to every charge and then whatever was there, I just reworded it. Um, so, and I just noticed I didn't add a D on the end of revised in, under charge amended when I got rid of amended, it says charge revise. So I'm gonna right now add that D. As a Scrivener thing. Um, so thoughts, I know Evan's got his hand up. So Evan. So uh, type charter, which was not one of our original categories, it makes sense um, because it's one that's mandated by the charter that doesn't necessarily belong to the town or the council. Um, yeah. So I guess I'd be curious to hear how people feel about that. Um, if we decide that JCPC is a charter committee, then I question whether we have to go back to BCG mm. that we just approved, um, which I had written as a council committee um, that was something I wasn't sure what to put there. And the reason I did it was when I went looking for the original charge. This is literally my only rationale, and you can tell me that was a stupid rationale, was I looked in the SharePoint for the charge, and it's under, it's in the folder labeled Town Council Committees. So 
the SharePoint has committee charges listed between ad hoc committees, committees of the town, and council committees. And beat the original BCTG charge was in the council committee's folder. And so I said, okay, I guess it's a council committee. I don't know that that's a great rationale. Um, but I would say we have to decide if we want to count JCPC as charter, then we should actually go back to BCG and amend that. That's actually a good point that I didn't catch on BCG. So the reason I changed this from standing to not council or not town is because it doesn't really fit either in terms of who the appointing authorities are. And so I felt if we've just put charter, it is less confusing for the appointing authorities. The other thing I forgot to mention is I actually deleted president under town council president for appointing authority. We had actually passed it with the president being the appointing authority. Um, um, no, the JCPC. Um, look, I'm, I'm just looking at the JCPC charge. Um, so um, to make that consistent now with our rules and with the town attorney opinion as to who appoints JCPC. Um, I didn't know what to do with the type, so that's why I created a new type, because it was kind of mentioned in the charter. I'm happy with whatever people think. Not hearing anything, I'm gonna, George? No. I was gonna say, I'm gonna just assume we, are okay with charter yeah. as the type. This is really weird, right? Because then my knee jerk reaction is would that mean that any committee that is specifically called for by the charter is the, a de facto charter committee? So when we revise participatory budgeting commission and rank choice voting, are those now ad hoc charter committees? Because they, they ha also have, yeah. right? I, I'm not, I'm okay with that, but I, I just wanna make, if we're making a decision on here, it should apply to any committee called out with a charter, with the exception, I assume, of finance, which is a council committee, but is also called for in the charter. Is it a charter council committee? <laughs> right. so, uh, yeah, I, I guess I did it based on, on, the reason I did it, as I said, was more of who the appointing authorities were, and so I felt like if we keep it council, like, what do I do? It's not really council because the council's not the sole appointing authority, and town makes the town manager. I guess maybe it could be a town committee because the town manager is the appointing authority if not otherwise defined in the charter, so maybe town is the better one than charter because the charter specifically states who the appointing authorities are, so that would exempt the other charter one from the town manager, even if we called it a town committee. So maybe town is better. George. When we use the word council for a type, right, what do we mean? We mean a body that is exclusively, is it the composition of the body? Is it the appointing authority of the body? What do we mean? I think our thoughts were council meant it's a subcommittee of the council essentially, right. and town meant not subcommittee of the council. council. Right. To me, council is a committee created by the council for the purpose of serving the council. council. Exactly. Which it's, it's not. It's not, you're right. And town is everything else, right? Yeah. So um, I guess town could work and then appointing authorities, we could just reference charter section 5.7b. Charter just creates this question in everyone's mind, What what is this charter yeah. committee? What is a charter yeah. committee? Um, Charter is what empowers the creation of various bodies, but it's not, right? So maybe the answer is town. Town? The other options, we have town, we have council, and we have ad hoc, correct? Ad hoc town, ad hoc and, council. Right, I'm sorry, yeah. thank you. Right. So town and council are the only two we came up with. And there may be a few bodies that are 
um, what are what are the terms they've seen? Um, anyway, we'll deal with them when they come along. I guess at the moment that so I think town is probably the solution. Oops, sorry. So it sounds like consensus is go to town from charter. Um, legal reference does reference the charter section, so the appointing authorities, because of that charter section, don't have to be the manager. Does that mean we also have to go back now and change the type for? Um, BCD. Yeah, we will look at that once we finish with this. We can't do a few things like that. No. <laughs> Thank God. We're, we're going to do this, and then <laughs> no, we'll, we will right. definitely go back to that before the end Thank of today's you. meeting. Um, so are we okay with all the rest of the changes in the heading? So that then brings us to composition, which I pretty much just bulleted out what we had written, what was already there. Um, purpose, that's the one we should look at. I did my best. With should probably be where. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, where the three major bodies. Yep. Okay, and then the charge, as I said. Um, just lists, lists right now, advise the town manager on the creation of the capital improvement program, and then I indented what the capital improvement, inc improvement program includes. Um, but based on the purpose, I guess all of that's in the capital improvement program in a sense. So I think we would be deleting number two at this point. As I said, it was more of my reference. Yeah. Any other thoughts on this one? Seeing none. Oh, Evan. I don't know if we talked about this. Where did we land on two? Delete it. Delete yeah. it? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so that means I will take a motion to recommend the council approve the revised JCPC charge as amended. Do I hear a motion? Uh, Steve. Do I hear a second? Second. And that's George. Any discussion? All those in favor? That is unanimous. So now we are going to move back to, and I am going to make a motion to um, reconsider our motion to recommend the council approve revised BCG charge um, as the formal way of us reopening that discussion so we can go and revise it. Um, so that's my motion. Do I hear a second to the motion to reconsider that? All those in favor of that motion? That's unanimous. We are now reconsidering the BCG charge. We will open it up again. So it sounds like we're going to change type to town. Um, and then since we're here, one couldn't be more minor. Uh, Mandy Joe put a uh, backslash between the N and the A in NA. I did not. It was presented two different ways, I think, in our template, and so I just picked one for consistency. <laughs> Shall we add that backslash to my NAs? To all the NAs? To all NAs, yeah. Sure. I think there's three of them. Four. I see four. Mm. Uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so that 
brings us to a new motion to recommend the council approve the revised BCG charge as amended. Well, yes, yeah, so we were reconsidering this motion to recommend the council approve the revised charge. So now we have amended that revised charge. So we need a friendly amendment to the motion that is just adding the words as amended to that motion. That is friendly, Evan, you moved it originally. Yeah, yeah. It's good. That nod, is a, that nod is the approval to add the words as amended to the end of the motion. Are we ready to revote the motion? All those in favor? It's again unanimous. Which now brings us to the begin follow up on town committee charge update request. Um, we have, we started approximately 10 minutes late, um, but I think we can end early at, uh, we can end on time at 1230. So we've got about 10 minutes with, since there are no public here to do public, co oh, no. So we also have to adopt minutes. So shall we begin our discussion on follow-up or push that off to the next meeting so that we can have a robust discussion in two weeks? Thoughts? We, in theory, have 20 minutes left of our two-hour meeting if we take the whole two hours. I agree with yeah. that. <laughs> so, I think so, so it sounds like there is a let's push that agenda item off. Um, it's, it's, I know it's bigger than 10 minutes, so we will postpone that item to next meeting, and I will put it first on the agenda at the next meeting. And this is on what? What's today's date? Um, June, I gotta look at my calendar, hold on. June 5th. June 5th meeting. I will put it first on the list. Um, so that means we are up to public comment. There is no public here, so no public comment. Um, adoption of April 24th and May 6th, 2019 minutes. Do I hear a motion for that? Second. Is what April twenty fourth and May sixth? I don't even know mine. April twenty fourth and May eighth. Any discussion? Who seconded? Uh, Evans to seconded. You. You're welcome. Any discussion? Sure, Evan. So one, so one uh, April 24th says items referenced in meeting colon and then there's nothing. So I don't know if we would either delete that or if we should have a habit of always having that but write none if there isn't one. Which one was it? Items, it said the very last thing on April 24th is items referenced in meeting mm. and it says, and there's just nothing after it. Um, so if, if there's, there were none, either I would say we delete that or we should write None, so people aren't like, oh, they forgot to add something. Is the April 24th meeting? Yeah. So we had things referenced. So we need to add that um, we referenced the FAQ, the GOL FAQ doc. Um, Mm, TMAC proposal I had no. postponed no. Oh. is what I had. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay, um, sorry, But sorry. the GOL doc we referenced, the GOL fact doc, um, GOL committee, no, we didn't, well, we referenced our original committee charge yeah. and the adoption of March 27th and April 10th minutes. So those three things, George, should be added to the doc. 
We can add them now. If you have it open, could you just do that? So the GOLFAQ document, mm -hmm. the original GOL committee charge, the draft March 27th, 2019 minutes, draft March 27, 2019 minutes, and the draft April 10. 2019 minutes. Evan? And then so just going forward with regard to minutes, um, these are all housekeeping things, but um, so I listed names as first initial, last name. Uh, this one listed names as first name, last initial, then used first names throughout. I looked at previous minutes to try and figure out what some, it's been all over the place. Some people use just last names. Um, and so we might, we don't have to have this discussion now, but we might wanna think about sort of standardizing um, even little things like that. Cause it, you know, I, I think the goal is that you can never tell who took minutes by looking at the minutes. They should all look the same. Um, but right now, it, clearly people are doing it different ways. And so at some point maybe just figure out, okay, this is how we present names. Um, this is, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. No, that's a good suggestion. If you look at the two sets of minutes for today. They're actually formatted very different ways. Okay. So what, I have, what I've done actually, uh, if they say, what might I make it here? Okay. I think that's, so yeah, no, I no, for that one, I think that's good. So we've amended the April 24th revised them today or amended them today to add the list of documents. Is there any recommendations on the May 8th? Our motion includes both, that's why I'm asking. So the motion will need to be adopt the April 24th minutes as amended and the May 8th or as revised. What's our convention? As amended, as amended. and the May 8th minutes. Any other discussion on those? All those in favor? That is unanimous. And since we have a whopping five minutes left, can we do a brief discussion on conventions for minutes? For names at least. Going forward, what do we prefer for our minutes? Should we just agree to last name? I think that's how it's done in, is that how it's done in the council minutes? I think it says counselor something, counselor something. Shall we just adopt that convention? Counselor, counselor last name? Yeah. To keep it consistent with the council minutes that our clerk takes? Sound good? That means we are up to a motion to adjourn. So moved. Evan moves. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. That is unanimous. We are adjourned as of 12.26 p.m.